This morning, we have a lifelong friend of mine, a very, very well-known individual in the community, does so much great work. I am so pleased to welcome this morning the phenomenal Mr. Dr. Connell Smith. Pleasure to be here. What's up, brother? Yeah, how you doing, man? Pleasure to be here. I'm doing good. The first thing I want to ask you, and uh, I just want to get your take on it because I've never had the opportunity to really broach this question with you, but I know exactly how I felt uh, in 2017 when I myself uh, was inducted into the African American Legacy Project Hall of Fame. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Because Dr. Smith went in this year's class of 2020. You know, I came up in the era of the yeah. 80s, yeah. and there were so many phenomenal athletes who came up that, that at that time who was as just as well as deserving as I am, or maybe even, even more. So, you know, that from that standpoint, it was it was like a humbling experience for me. But then, it, you know, it, it made me reflect a little bit on uh, my career, uh, the guys that I played with, the coaches who coached me. And uh, it was just, a lot of things went through my mind. And also, you know, things that I try to share with our kids is that, you know, I was being recognized for something that I did when I was 16, 17 years old, 18 years old. And it's amazing how life works and the ripple effects on how you get recognized years later for the work and the foundation that you put in um, as a youngster. So uh, it, was, it was humbling. It was a great experience for my family to be able to experience yes. that with me, um, especially my mom, who's always been my biggest supporter, who's always believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. Yeah. So it's, it's great to be able to share that with people you love. Yeah. Anything about it, uh, going in this, year, in this year's class, is so honorary because, like you just say, I stated, there have been over the different areas, eras, so many great athletes to come from the 419. Yeah. So to yeah. be selected uh, at that level uh, is quite amazing. Absolutely. It really is. So when you read the bio of those folks who were elected in, and I, it's, it's like, it's amazing, <laughs> you know, yeah. their accomplishments, especially uh, uh, I got an opportunity to talk to the great uh, Sam Price. Yes. And I yes. call him the great Sam Price. A former Scott Bulldog, former right? Scott Bulldog running back. Yes. And just listening to him and listening uh, to some of his stories in, uh, at Scott High School and even when he played at Illinois and, uh, and also in the NFL. And he also shared with us the story of how he was kicked out of the game against the Vilvis when he had them on the ropes ready to upset them because the Vilvis was a powerhouse at that time. And just somehow he was kicked out of the game from a personal foul and he was running the ball. But it was interesting to hear those type of things yeah. and hear different stories from the great athletes uh, uh, who came through. Yes. The next thing I want to touch on is uh, you do as a leader over at Scott High School, as an inspirational person, as a motivator with your, your, your students and your staff, we had a pandemic in yeah. 2020. Yes. Uh, and we still, in a sense, having a pandemic. So I just want you to uh, kind of give our audience a feel of what's going on right now at Scott, because I believe you're actively, the students are back, actively back in the school. Yes. Uh, and so what's some of the great things that you are, you are instilling this year at 2400 Collingwood Boulevard? Well, basically what we want to get back and we try to get get into uh, a routine yes. you know, back into normalcy. Uh, one thing that I want to continue, I continue to uh, notify our staff and to to uh, let them know that I'm a cause and effect type of guy. You know what I mean? Yes. I, 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 I see the effects of things and then I want to know the cause. So one thing that uh, I brought to our staff attention, especially when I was talking to our, uh, relating to our freshmen and our other students, is that last year, as eighth graders, those youngsters were only in their building for maybe about four weeks, right? Prior to that, as seventh graders, they only spent like three quarter of the year in school. So by the end of the third quarter, they were out of school. The last time our youngsters, our freshmen, had a full year of school, they were in the sixth grade. Wow. So when you let that soak in, so then you look at our seniors. Yes. And you count in the last four weeks of school last year, right? When the pandemic hit, they were sophomores. 
workforce. Yes. And so basically they've only been in the building for two years. So it's a reconnect, it's a reconnect with building relationships, um, having understanding, having grace and mercy right. with each other as staff members, as well as with our kids while maintaining high expectations, because we still got to have high expectations. Because in my humble opinion and the factor in my biases and all that, our kids are brilliant. Yes. And they are some of the most brilliant kids around. Yes. And and so what what I, I often tell our staff is that we never going you're never gonna ride down the street and find a piece of gold or lay it on the side of the road. We gotta go dig for this right. thing. So we gotta work to do with our kids to continue to build relationships, continue to have high expectations. So that's what we're in right now. And, this week is homecoming, and so is Spirit Week. And um, the spirit and the atmosphere and the electricity that's in the building with our students and with our staff, I'm extremely proud of them. And, and we're working through this thing together because there's a lot of issues. There's always some type of adversity that we're looking at on a daily basis. And I tell people when I come to work, it's like a box of Cracker Jacks. I don't know what the prize is going to be, but we just got to be ready to adjust. Yes, yes. And, uh, and, 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 and fortunately, through athletics, yeah. I've learned to make adjustments on the fly. Right. And, and having an amazing group of professionals around me to work with me, yes. right, it makes it easier. Yes. I mean, just from having great secretaries, cafeteria workers, teachers, administrators, counselors, it just makes it easier because we're all working together for one common goal, and that's to ensure the success of our students. Well, Dr. Smith, those are very poignant uh, points that you just made. Opportunity and chance, that's, that's how I'm looking at what you yeah. just told me. Uh, and so it's been great having you, man. Thanks a lot for your time and your efforts and a great got job that you Thank continue you. to do on this guy. And uh, you know, I did notice that you had to say something about Scott Bulldogs having an advantage over the, the, the Bilbo's Tigers during this interview, and that was expected. That's okay. Well, it wasn't an advantage. <laughs> I wasn't talking about advantage. I was talking about a disadvantage for Scott. Oh, okay. You know okay, I mean? yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Scott had the upper hand. <laughs> well, we still lost the game after they picked, kicked out the great Sam Price. Right. Okay, that's been great, man. So now we're going to close with, and you know this guy, the GOAT, yes, Mr. Tom Cole. He's the GOAT. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to the Steve Taylor Community Connection, part two with uh, Doc. You know, your passion, your, you create at Scott what I call aspirational hope. In other words, you, you inspire the kids mm -hmm. to want to reach goals and, and be more than they could ever dream of being. Yes. And you provide hope that they can do it. You know, it's one thing to kind of say, oh, yeah, well, you can be an attorney or you can be, you know, but you provide concrete, listen, reach up, grab the goal. That's right. You can do it. My question to you, Doc, is how do you do that? What's your style because you're so effective? How do you do that? Well, like, it came from my mom. That's my foundation, and I learned my efficacy there, you know, and she instilled in me a long time ago, like I was telling Terry. She believed in me when I didn't or couldn't believe in myself. Right. And I can remember one day I was in the eighth grade and she got my grades. She got my grade card before I could get home and intercept them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was just asking me. She's like, Colonel, why don't you do better at school? And I was like, I said, well, I'm just average. And I couldn't even finish the sentence. And I got a backhand in the mouth and told me I can never speak like that again about myself. And so she, yeah. even to this day, uh, she's going through a lot of... Um, uh, physical, you know, yes. uh, health issues yes. and stuff like that. But all she does is just continue to breathe in me. And so with that, I have an obligation to pass that on. And I'm blessed to be able to, to be in a profession where each and every day I can be in front of young people. And just so happen is at my alma mater that I can provide life. I can breathe life into our youngster. And I take it very seriously. And I truly enjoy it. It's just something, like I said, I was telling Terry, our kids are brilliant. And the thing is, that us as a staff, we have to dig and bring that yeah. out and get them to believe in themselves. Because once that happens, the world is going to open up for yes. them so much. And so that's where it comes from. And that's who I am myself. I graduated from Scott High School with like a 2.4 grade point average. Right. 
I graduated from the University of Pittsburgh with the same type of grade point. Sure. Yeah, I want our kids to know that we still don't have any excuses because when I got to the University of Pittsburgh, Tom, they told me my SAT scores were so low. But the fact of the matter is people can't quantify the heart. Yes. And desire. Yes. So I graduated in four years at, from the University of Pittsburgh where the average SAT score was at 1100. And I attribute that to first and foremost to my foundation with my mom and then the coaches and the teachers that I had yes. at Scott High School in the community who believed in me. They kept just breathing life in me and I graduated in four years. And so I passed that on to our kids that there are no excuses. Yes. And I don't care what it looks like. Yes. What do you want to do? Yes. You know, and it's all about a belief in yourself and then just put forth for a little effort. Well, it's so interesting to me, Doc, because when we interviewed previous at Scott High School, which was a great honor for me, I went home and I, you know, I share everything with my wife. Maybe I share more than I should. I don't know. Sometimes she says, hey, don't tell me everything. But anyways, I went home and I said, you know, I just chatted with a gentleman that is incredible. Uh, he's a difference maker. Uh, and he's, he's something that I believe in, and that is an encourager. Doc, you are an encourager. And I don't know that everyone walking around today understands the power of saying a positive word to somebody, especially to a young person, but to anybody, you know, whether they're teachers, coaches, hey, everybody needs encouragement. Everybody needs somebody to say, hey, I think you can do this. Hey, you know, you've got some talent. Hey, you know what? You're better at this than you realize. You know, today I think we get away from being encouragers. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have that thing, oh, I did it all on my own back in the day. No, you didn't. Let's go back and look at it, how you got where you got. There was a teacher, there was a coach, there was a parent, somebody lifting you up and giving you an opportunity. And Doc, you are such an encourager. It makes me believe in the system. It, it really, Thank truly you. does. Thank you. Thank you. Well, everybody deserves to hear something good. Right. And especially in this pandemic. Yes. You know, where right is now left and left yep. is now right, right. sometimes and something yep. Just, yep. is upside down. And the only thing we can do, I know, is a team. And I know teamwork. And then as long as we continue to work together as a team, going in the same direction, then we can all breathe life into our kids and stuff. So any day you can come to Scott High School and you'll see me set up in the hallway, working out in the hallway, and they give me an opportunity to- interact. Say something nice to the kids as they go by. Exactly. How you doing in math class? I saw your grade was up a little bit. Yes. You're getting it. Yes. What a good, great idea that is, and though. that's the way it is. And so when I'm outside, look, almost every day, as the students coming into the building. So I get to see the faces of our students. Yeah. I don't know what they experienced the night before. I don't know what they just heard yeah. getting out of the car. And sometimes they get out of the car, they're crying or whatever, and I wanna be right there yeah. to let them know that it's gonna be okay. And if they need to come sit in my office for a while, they can talk, we can get, tell you they get themselves together, but we still got to go to class. So that's what uh, I'm there and, and, and I pride myself on being effective with that. And then sometimes even the kids that come by now, they're telling me, Dr. Smith, you're you having a great day. Yeah. And then he's like, hey, Dr. Smith, it look like a lot on your mind. And they'll tell me, hey, hit this rock right here. That's going to be all right. <laughs> well, I like and that. So they're using my stuff on me. I like but, it. Which is good. So I yeah, know that they're, they're getting it. They're, they're getting, getting it. it. Yeah. And so now they can encourage each other and stuff. And so that's how leadership arises. So. Doc, there's an old movie. You're too young for this. But uh, Michael Keaton did it a long time. It's kind of a B movie, but it was called Multiplicity. And, and what he did is he cloned himself. So there were the character he played in the movie, there were, it started out, there were two or three of him yeah. and they were doing all the different jobs yeah. and he, he would sit back and relax and yeah. then he cloned some more and suddenly you know, there's 15 of them all. Well, yeah. Doc, I'll tell you what, we need to shoot that movie here in Toledo and we need to multiply you oh, in every area of the community because again, you provide aspirational hope, encouragement, all the things that our young people need and all the things that us adults need. And you are such a testament and such an example to that. It's an honor for Cross and I to have you in the studio. Yeah. Um, you know, and we can't thank you enough for the work that you do. Thank you so much. As, a, as a leader. You. Thank you. Thanks, thank Doc. Thank you so much. Uh, I truly appreciate it. And I'm, I'm truly glad to be here to uh, talk about my experiences and the experience of Scott High School and the magnificent things that's going on there. And the things that's continued to come that we just opened our fitness center. We just donated, uh, had recognition and dedication for that. We're about to begin our 2400 Legacy Brick Drive where alums and, and people who just have a great interest in Scott can purchase a brick for $100. And we have something really fabulous coming up next month, November the 6th. 
that's going to be taking place at Hot Scott High School. But further information will be coming out about that. Well, Doc, don't forget uh, about Taylor Automotive family. Uh, Steve Taylor, Mr. Taylor, have an incredible giving heart. And uh, Cross and Nick and myself, if there's some way that we can help you in your yeah. all these different ventures, please reach out to us. Absolutely. I greatly appreciate it. All right, Doc. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Tom Cole for the Steve Taylor Community Connection.